Mm. Mm. <laughs> mm. So warm. Mm. Oh, it seems like you're finally awake. Good morning, human girl. Or should I say, good night? Shh, 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 shh. Don't be scared. You're safe now. Safe with me. <laughs> what am I doing? That's a silly question. What does it feel like I'm doing? I'm snuggling you, of course. Keeping you warm on a cold night in the forest. Keeping myself warm, too. You humans are always so warm. Maybe it's a result of your weak little human bodies. You have no fur or scales to protect you. No soft, fluffy tails to curl up in. And you have no claws or fangs or hard scales. You're so weak, so exposed, so vulnerable. <laughs> you know... It's not safe to wander around the woods at night, human girl. So far away from your human villages, a monster might come along and snatch you up. Hmm, what am I? Come now, my dear human girl. I know your eyesight's not as strong as mine in the dark, but surely you can tell by now. My thick fluffy tail wrapped around us, my tall fuzzy ears, my claws gently gliding across your skin. I'm a kitsune. <laughs> oh, you look so scared. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. No resisting now. I'm not letting you get away from me. Shh. Be still now, human girl. I said, stop struggling. If you keep screaming like that, you'll attract a Jorugumo boy to my bed. And I don't want to have to fight a Jorugumo boy in my own house. Do you know what a Jorugumo is, human girl? They're monster boys like me, but with multiple long, spindly legs, like a spider. Sometimes the older and more dangerous ones trade in their arachnid features for something more human-like, so as to trick sweet, naive human girls like you into approaching them in the forest. By the time you notice just how many arms they have hidden within their yukatas, it's already too late. What do you think would happen if one came into my home and stole you away from me? Hmm? So many hands. So many teeth. Aww. You look absolutely terrified. You've gone so pale, and I can feel your lips trembling beneath my palm. You know, human girls always look so cute when they're scared. Your nose and your cheeks have gone so pink, and your eyes look so pretty welling up with tears. Mm, it makes my whole body tremble with excitement. I could just eat you all up. That is what monster boys do, don't we? We devour humans. But don't worry, human girl. That's not going to happen. Now, I'm going to remove my hand from your mouth. And you aren't going to scream any more. Otherwise, I'll have to hurt you. Okay? Yeah? <laughs> Good. Uh, <laughs> 
There, there. It's all right. You can wipe your tears on my fur. Right now, I've got the both of us wrapped up in my tail. Isn't it so warm and soft? Where are you? You're in my home. A little hollow at the top of my tree. Somewhere we can have some privacy. Am I going to hurt you? <laughs> Silly human girl. I saved you. You look so scared, lost and alone in the middle of the night. I was laying at the top of my tree, you see, taking in the night air when something caught my ear. I sat up and listened closely, and much to my surprise, it sounded like a girl shouting. But not just any girl, a human girl. I couldn't believe it at first. A human girl? This deep? In the forest? So I sat very still and listened for you again. I craned my neck and my ears strained so hard until I could hear even the wind whispering through the tree branches. And then I heard you again. Help me! Help me! You yelled. Then I knew my ears weren't playing tricks on me anymore. So I took off at a sprint. Please, 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 I pleaded in my head. I had to be quick. You had to be mine. I couldn't let some Naga or Joraguma or one of those loathsome Nekomata get to you first. So I made my way to the forest floor and sprinted in your direction as fast as I could. When I finally found you, you looked so scared. Your leg was cut and bleeding, and your outfit was badly torn. You had dirt on your cheeks, and I could tell you must have tripped at some point. You smelled so good, all covered in sweat and reeking of fear. My mouth watered, and I swooned as I watched you stumble around in the dark. You were so lost, you were so perfect, but I had to act quickly. With how loud and clumsy you were being, there was no way that I was the only monster boy who'd noticed you. So I crouched low to the ground, using the darkness to hide my silhouette. And the second you looked away, I pounced on you. It was so easy to drag you beneath a bush and smother you until you fell unconscious. You must have been wandering around in the dark for quite a while. You barely put up a fight. But now that you were in my arms, it was taking everything that I had not to get a little taste of you. Just a little sniff of your neck. Just a little lick of your blood. I couldn't help it. I needed it. It was my reward for getting to you first. But before I could get a taste of you, I was interrupted by a sound. It was another human. But not another human girl. This one was a human boy. A male. Pfft, what use did I have for a human boy? Their bodies are so hard and rough. Sure, he'd keep me warm at night, but there'd be no pleasure in holding him. Mmm, and snuggling him. <sighs> he seemed to be calling out for you. Are you out there? Don't be scared. Just come out and I'll show you the way back to the village, I promise, he cried. Did he know you, I wondered? I couldn't risk losing you so soon. Not after how hard I worked to claim you first. <laughs> so I stood up and I shrunk down to the size of a child. Mm -hmm. Monster boys who live long enough gain certain abilities. I can't change my shape, but I can change my size. This is my real size, all big and strong. <laughs> but if I want, I can shrink my body to look much smaller and younger. So I stood up, much less taller now, and worked up some tears. I stumbled out from behind the bush and cried, Help! Help me! I'm scared! 
<laughs> I tucked my tail beneath my kimono and laid my ears flat against my head, of course. The human boy was so surprised. I must have startled him because he whipped his lantern towards me right away. A little boy? What's a child doing all the way out here? I could hear him ask himself. I walked over to him, wiping my eyes with my sleeves and whimpered. Please, sir, I'm lost. Can you help me find my home? He looked down at me with such confusion. He seemed conflicted and kept looking around, presumably to find you, I'm sure. But I gave him the most pitiful whine and clung to his jinbei. Uh, yeah, sure, kid, just come with me, he relented. So I took his hand and followed. I let him lead me for a while, too. Who was this human boy? Who was he to you? He was much larger and older than you, that's for sure. He was balding, with rough stubble along his jaw. His clothes were kind of ratty, with scars and scuffs all over his forearms, and he was dim-witted, too. He didn't notice my yellow eyes or the markings on my cheeks, even with that paper lantern of his. Imagine, a mysterious little boy walks up to you in a dark forest in the middle of the night, asking for help, and you just take his hand blindly and do as he says? <laughs> what a fun night this had turned out to be! He asked me questions like where I'd come from and how I'd gotten lost, but I brushed him off by saying that I didn't remember. He complimented me on my kimono. He said it looked expensive, even if it was too big for me. He asked if my parents were wealthy, and when I looked up at him, he had the most peculiar glint in his eye. I recognized that look. I'd seen it so many times before from other monster boys. His tone sounded innocent enough, but... He looked at me the way a predator does when they're looking at a cornered prey. <sighs> this human boy really thought that he had captured me? <sighs> How exhilarating! I could barely keep from grinning. I told him, Yes, oh yes, my parents are very wealthy, mister. I'm sure they'd be ever so grateful if you brought me home to them. <laughs> After that, he was silent for quite a while. The way he walked told me he was tired. He must have been walking for quite a while, just like you. Maybe running. And the more I smelled him, the more he started to smell really good. I couldn't make out what it was, though. There was the earthiness of the dirt on his clothes and the salty tinge of his sweat, but there was something else intermingled with it all. Suddenly, we took a sharp turn off the path and he pinned me up against a tree with my hand above my head. I looked up at him in confusion and he pulled a beat-up old knife out from inside of his jinbei. Now listen here, kid, he growled while he loomed over me. He put the tip of his knife to my throat as he smirked and said, I'm going to take you home now, don't you worry. But your mommy and daddy are going to have to show me how badly they want you back home first. I'm going to tell them that if they don't pay me 30,000 mon, then I'm going to start sending them little pieces of you until they do. Don't worry, I'll start with your fingers and toes first. But if mommy and daddy love you very much, then maybe you'll still be able to count to six or seven at least. But first, I'm going to need to rough you up a bit so you know I'm serious. He kept droning on, but I wasn't really listening to him. <sighs> that smell. Now that he was this close, close enough that I could feel his hot breath on my face, I could finally figure out what that incredible smell was. It was you. I could smell it, clear as day. Your perfume, your sweat, your blood. It was all over him. <sighs> your smell was so close. I closed my eyes, and even while he rattled on triumphantly, even while he used that dingy little blade to cut me, all I could hear was you. All I could feel was you. 
I felt so close to you, so connected to you in that moment, even while he drew my blood. Uh. <laughs> so I let him have his fun for a while. I let him hit my face, kick me in the stomach, cut my neck, my cheek, my chest, pull my hair. When he grabbed my hand again and pulled me back up, he asked me something. What the hell's the matter with you, kid? Ain't you going to say something? Ah, I'd been so lost in your scent that I must have missed him asking me a question. What? I asked, trying my best to sound in pain. I said, what the hell are those markings on your face? You got tattoos or something? He said. Ah, so he finally noticed. I grinned wide and toothy, and I licked the blood running down my cheek. I squeezed his hand, the one that was pinning mine to the tree tighter than a boy my size should have been able to. I let my ears spring up and my large fluffy tail slid free from my kimono as I grew to my full size. I must have squeezed pretty hard because I heard his hand make a loud pop and he screamed and fell to his knees. (laughs) What a silly human boy. Just a moment ago, he thought he'd won, that he was in control, that he was the predator and I was his prey. (laughs) How novel. He groveled and begged for me to let him go, told me how sorry he was that he hurt me, and he cried for me to let him live as my wounds began to close up already. Hurt me? He didn't hurt me. I thought we were having fun. He didn't even bother trying to defend himself with his little knife. (laughs) I embraced him. I embraced you and took in all of your scent again. Your dried blood, your sweat, your fear. I savored that moment until I drooled. He prayed for my mercy, my pity, my forgiveness as I dug my claws into the top of his hand. He was such a big, muscular human boy, and with such a sharp knife, too. And all it took was one hand to reduce him to this? What happened to all that confidence, that bloodlust, that power that he had a moment ago? Is that what he did to you? Did that human boy chase you? Did he hurt you? Did he cut you with the same knife that he used to cut me? <laughs> He dropped his knife in an effort to show his good will, and I wiped the tears from his cheek and smiled at him. I held his gaze, and for a moment, I could see a faint glimmer of hope in his eyes. Thank you, I whispered, and then I cut him. (laughs) That's right, it was my turn to have my fun now. I used my claws and my teeth, and I didn't stop until he had no more hot red blood to give me. (laughs) Are you scared, human girl? Oh, you shouldn't be, because in that moment, I felt so good. That ugly, dumb human boy brought us closer together. You are mine, and I am yours forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. You are my human girl, and I wouldn't let any filthy human boy take you away from me. (sighs) Did I eat him? (laughs) There's no need to worry. I didn't take any of his meat just blood. All I wanted was to have my fun. I left the rest for the scavengers. Will I eat you? (laughs) No, no. I won't eat you, human girl. I won't use my claws or my teeth on you the way I did that human boy. So long as you be a good human girl. I won't ruin you like that. No. You are here to warm my bed. To let me hold you. 
and drink in your delicious human scent. I already cleaned the wound on your leg. See? Mm hmm While you were asleep, I licked up all the blood until you were nice and clean. <sighs> That'll save me for quite a while. You know, monster boys don't take humans only to devour them. We don't congregate like you humans do. Each of us lives solitary lives. So, eventually, we begin to crave companionship. But I couldn't trust to share my home with another monster boy. Someone with claws and teeth or venom or hard scales. Someone who could try and devour me? <laughs> that wouldn't do. But as I said before, you don't have claws or fangs or hard scales. Do you? You're so soft and warm and weak. You need to be protected, to be kept safe, and you need to keep me nice and warm during these cold, lonely nights. So from now on, that's exactly what you're going to do. You'll stay right here in my bed, at the top of my tree, and I'll feed you and protect you and love you. <laughs> That's right. I've loved you from the moment I saw you, from the moment I smelt you, from the moment I tasted you. You're scared? Don't be scared, human girl. We're connected by blood now, you and I. That makes our love so very special. So very inseparable. Love in the human world looks so hard. Hearts change and people are fickle. But not monster boys. Not me. I'll love you, human girl. I'll love you so much. <laughs> mm.